most difficult things about being president-elect is trying to figure out what in heaven's name you're going to talk about when you finally walk up on the stage and um, start and end as president-elect and start in as president. But in last year's presidential address, Kent uh, noted that we needed to do a better job of selling our science and getting the public to understand what we do and why we have enthusiasm for doing it. He also stated, though, that a Pew survey indicated that we were doing pretty well in educating students, but not so well for the public at large. I don't disagree with this statement, but on the other hand, I also think that we have some problems in our training of undergraduate students. And after all, they are our future. They are the ones who are going to walk up on this podium in a few years. So we need to really concentrate on where we're going in undergraduate education. Now, I had just finished a three-year term at the National Science Foundation, where I was deeply involved in an effort to look at issues in undergraduate education with the AAAS. And we, um, we had a series of things that happened there, and I thought that I would try and weave this into the um, into the topic. So I was thinking after last year's meeting, well, I think that's what I might do. But I had a year. So who was worried? <laughs> I started thinking about it. In fact, I even talked with some of you about it. You know, do you think that would be a good idea? But I had some other ideas too that I passed by many of you. Several of you said, no, no stick with the undergraduate education. We think you've been doing that a long time. That's fine. So I thought, oh, okay. I guess I'll give that some thought. Well, give it some thought, you know, how we all are. Things go on. I kept thinking, I've got a long time, I've got a long time. About the second week of March, I got an email from Joanne who said, by the way, Judy, in about 10 days, your abstract and title are due. <laughs> <laughs> and my response was, yikes! Nobody told me that the president-elect had to have a title and an abstract in the program. <laughs> Surely something is wrong with this picture. So I went back through the website from all the previous meetings as far back as they went. To my surprise, every single president-elect has a title and an abstract. <laughs> Steve, I'm telling you right now. <laughs> so that began a frantic 10-day search to pull together what I thought would probably be a series of musings and NSF reports and NRC reports and notes and whatever, thinking, what am I going to do? And behold, I found an article by Harry Fuller, written in 1956, a couple of years before he became president of this very society, entitled, The Owner of Body. And in this abstract, he quotes a member of the National Academies of Science who wrote to him and said, Botany is in bad odor in American universities. I am mad about plants and would never wish to be anything else but a botanist. If anything could stop me, however, it would be the average general botany course. <laughs> Bola doesn't tell us who that member of the National Academies was. So, as I examined the article, there were a lot of interesting points in here. He mentions, for example, that advances in visual aids have happened over 50 years. Now, this article by Fuller went back over the previous 50 years of botany. Um, by the way, I should say that it's called the A period, R period, O period, M period, A period of botany. That probably comes about because having served four years in two different positions at NSF, which is the incubator of acronyms as well as <laughs> research, I couldn't resist. So Fuller mentions these, these things that have happened. 
such as advances in visual aids, such as Kodachrome slides, charts and models, time lapse motion picture films. He talks about better resources, such as readable textbooks and microscopes. He talks about organisms, physiology, and behavior being emphasized in botany courses. He talks about the methods of teaching, such as machine grading and labs. And he talks about accumulating numbers of students in courses. Now, one might think we've come quite a way. PowerPoint slides, YouTube video, online information, SEM, TEM, organisms, molecular analysis, and phylogeny, clickers, and experiential learning, and students who begin at community colleges for two years and then transfer, meaning that we really are giving two-year degrees now. Fuller ponders whether this progress is progress or whether we're just simply seeing change, which we are confusing with progress. And he discusses various problems, such as films, and one might say now websites, have errors. Texts still present more and more facts with less relevance. Sound familiar? Exams do not measure the ability to reason. There is no increase in resources for teaching, no regard or reward for good introductory teaching. Any comments that these changes have not resulted in improvements in teaching at all. He notes some of the faults of botanists. A failure to realize that the majority of students will only have one botany course. That we have remained slaves to tradition and course presentation. We are overly concerned with the insides of plants. <laughs> we mentor botany grads who are extremely specialized and not broad thinkers. And we have allowed lab study to become too mechanical, too restrictive, too stereotyped, with no independent thought. And he, he concludes with calls for activities on the part of botanists noting that they should lose their excessive meekness. <laughs> I have no idea what botanist he could be talking about. <laughs> that we should introduce whole plant relationships in courses. That we should encourage creativity and initiative from our students. That we should make the courses pertinent. And in the next 50 years, he hopes that botany will become more fragrant. <laughs> well, how are we doing? Well, <laughs> there are some things that botany is not doing so well. We have fewer departments and courses. We have declining resources for instruction. We have less support for undergraduates. For example, NSF has, still has postdoctoral fellows. We still have graduate research fellows. But many of the undergraduate support courses that went directly to its undergraduate research have been disappearing. And there are still some, but they are not as large as they were in the past. And the main funding now supports pedagogy. There's an emphasis on even more specialization. Further insight to molecules, oftentimes only applied aspects of botany are taught rather than the basic science information critical to understanding life. Or conversely, we teach with a litany of facts with no relevance to reality, as Fuller described in his article. So are we really going further down the road he warned against on that note? I think not. I think there's a fragrance side. 